Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. On this week's video, I'm gonna do something a little different and I wanna introduce a new series or project, but I'd like to have your opinions and help as I go uh, to make this better. So I'm working right now to get better at things like Adobe Illustrator so I can put together plans and part lists for this particular project. And then as I work towards making it an actual functioning item, I'll have parts lists on the website uh, so you can go buy all the parts and build it yourself. I would even entertain the idea of uh, making up like kits uh, so you can just buy all the parts in one place and then make it up yourself or just use the plans and buy all the parts on your own and uh, make it your own way. I want to make it so that it works for my needs and it'll be open enough in its design that you can modify it add things or take things away depending on your needs and I'm pretty excited about it. So for years now, the Whirlwind Cue Box has been the most popular like diagnostic test box uh, that I've seen in the industry. Everybody I know has one or has had multiples of them. Uh, they show up in work boxes a lot. It's a pretty common tool that's just always on the job site. I like the cue box a lot, but for most of what I need it for, it's just overkill and I'd like to have more than one of them for certain functions and the price kind of prohibits that and then the fact that they get lost or stolen occasionally is kind of a pain considering how expensive they are. They're around $220, which I totally understand why Whirlwind charges that much for them. They're a quality tool and they do a lot of stuff. But for what I'm using them for most, it's a little overkill to have a pair of those and then risk having them lost or stolen. Also, they take a 9-volt battery, which I'm not super excited about because I don't really carry 9 volts anymore. A lot of gear has gone away from that. So I'd like to have something that's rechargeable, and ideally I'd like to have something uh, that's kind of an all-in-one audio test box, um, and then also a battery backup. So something I could carry or put on a belt clip that uh, would also work to charge my phone in an emergency. Uh, so a USB-A port on it would be nice so I could charge up other devices uh, from the internal battery and then also have the unit itself be uh, rechargeable uh, from USB. So in that vein, I've come up with a kind of a eBay prototype that I'm working on and I'm still waiting on some parts. So this is just the very introduction here. Uh, in the next couple of videos, I'm gonna put together these different parts that I've sourced off of eBay and Amazon. I'm gonna make one of these, I think just out of like cheapo uh, eBay parts and another one with nicer, but still as easily accessible uh, Amazon parts. So you can order those a little more consistently maybe than the eBay stuff. Let me just show you what I've got so far. So. The idea is to make a cue box type device that's a little smaller than the cue box. And so far I've found these really nice little boxes on eBay and oh, it's just a bag of screws and it's got a nice kind of rounded over edge that fits. Yeah, it fits into your pocket nicely. So a box, something like this. Now this I think is going to end up being a little too small, but um, this is just the first one that's come in the mail as uh, part of the prototyping. I ordered a couple of these to see what they do. I plan on powering the first one at least with an 18650 uh, rechargeable cell. These are very readily available and cheap and easy to work with. So I plan on using the 18650 for power. So to deal with powering and charging the 18650, uh, I've got this little chip here off of eBay, which I'll link and show you closer. And that's just simply uh, USB in over here. And on the other side, you connect the battery and the load. It's a very simple little circuit. I doubt I will remake that. That's uh, pretty much as clean as you can get those to look. Obviously an XLR input and uh, output, just standard Neutrik connectors there. And this is just a little audio amplifier based off of an LM386. Uh, it's got a volume pot, 3.5 millimeter input. Uh, it's got power input and speaker output. Very, very simple little uh, audio amplifier there that I'm gonna use to prototype with. And then I tried to order a set of speakers on eBay that would fit into this case. And so far what arrived, this was by the eBay listing supposed to fit in this. And this is what showed up, this monster uh, 10 watt 8 ohm speaker. So 
going to try again on ordering a new speaker, but the idea is that, uh, you yeah, know, this is a waterproof, um, kind of interesting mylar type material. This was supposed to be just a tiny little speaker that would fit right here. Uh, so that would have been kind of cool. But the idea is this will be mounted inside or under or somehow. You don't need uh, super high fidelity on the speaker. You just need to be able to hear for things like buzzes and see if the signal's present and that kind of thing. So far, uh, I'm looking somewhere around the 20 to $30 range of worth of parts to make a quality one. If I'm, you know, just kind of back of the envelope uh, numbers there, I'm sure it could be made cheaper, simpler, better. Uh, the big priority for this first revision is to use this little amplifier module and transformer isolate the input. So it'll be an XLR going through a, a simple transformer to isolate it and then uh, inputting to this out to the speaker. And that'll be simply so I can plug this box into uh, an output of a piece of gear that I want to test and listen to see what it sounds like uh, to verify that there's signal there or you know things like that that's the number one thing i do with a cue box is uh, if there's an aux end going somewhere or going feeding something or feeding a record device or a press molt uh, you want to verify that there's signal there and what level that signal's at sometimes can be handy and you run over with your cue box and you plug it in, you make sure you've got signal and no noise and that's a really handy feature. So I would like to put a calibrated LED meter on this uh, for this purpose. Uh, another thing I would really like to add to this maybe in the next revision and something that may be more important to you feature wise would be to have a tone generator and an output. So just like the cue box, they suggest you can use two of them. Uh, one is a send and the other is a receive. I I'd like to be able to build these cheap enough that I could afford to carry two of these. Uh, all the time and small enough and light enough that it's not a cumbersome thing to have two of these But that's you know being able to verify with either the speaker or a headphone jack So you can walk around and verify a send is working or listen to something you're trying to troubleshoot or to be able to send tone to a destination But my first priority is to get a rechargeable uh, Little portable speaker. That's it an isolated input uh, rechargeable off of USB holds a charge you know a lot of the time when you pick up a cue box you will find that it hasn't been shut off all the way or that the 9 volt battery is just dead for whatever reason and I'd like to avoid that by using the rechargeable cell that's a lot easier to recharge in the field without having to go buy an expensive 9 volt so I'm gonna keep working on learning Adobe Illustrator better so I can do better at putting uh, together plans I'm going to continue to buy more parts for this and uh, more stuff is on its way right now from eBay, but I'm going to continue to buy uh, some more stuff on Amazon and get a parts list together and start to experiment. The next video will hook this stuff up. The transformer should be here by then and we'll do some tests and see what kind of quality we can get out of some other speakers. I've got some smaller speakers on their way uh, that should fit this case. So in the next video, we will hook all this up and see what we get. So I'm really excited about this, but I'd love to hear your opinions. I'd love to hear what you think about this idea. Um, I'm a big fan of the, the cue box. Don't get me wrong. This is not a hating on the cue box uh, video at all. If you need all of the features that the cue box has, it's not a bad deal. If if you like the cue box and you've been using it for a long time, you know, I, I'm not suggesting to stop using cue boxes. I would just like to own something a little cheaper and a little simpler that if it gets lost or gets stolen or doesn't get returned or gets broken or whatever happens to it uh, on a job, I'm not going to be upset about it. I'd like to build it down to the point of it being like an expendable, you know, item and something that you can build at home and get some use out of without spending a couple hundred dollars. I think this is a really handy tool for folks just getting into live sound. You really should have uh, some sort of tool like this, but the entry price of $200 and there are other options on the market for cue box like items, but they're all more expensive. They get up into three, $400 and more. And while they have a ton of awesome features and they're really, really cool, I just think that's a little bit of a high mark for entry level students and people just getting into this. And, you know, if you're working with bar bands and things of that level, diagnostic tools are helpful, but are you going to spend $200 on a cue box working with a bar band PA system? Probably not, but you might 
really have a use for one. So a cool little project. Hopefully we can make it easily together and put the plans up and have it be kind of an open source thing that you can uh, add features to and then share back with the community how you did that. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. So let me know in the comments below what you think and uh, jump over to the website for the full article about this. This is just a quick introduction video. I've got more about like, you know, what features I want to incorporate and my, you know, issues I've had so far and that kind of thing. So please check out the website and comment there, comment on the video and let me know what your thoughts are and what you'd like to see. And if you plan on building one along with the video series, that'd be really cool to hear how you're gonna do it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the websites linked below and leave me a comment and let me know what you think of this project and what you would do or what you'd like to see me do with this one. And hopefully together we can build a really useful tool. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, welcome to all the new subscribers. And if you want to help me make more of these videos, just follow the affiliate links in the description below or go right over to the website and check out all the new content over there. Thanks for watching. See you next time.